Hey folks, this is Pete, your Hubitat Hub Whisperer here to help you get the most out of your Hubitat Elevation Hub. Today, we're looking at a brand new smart switch. This is a GE Jasco and Brighton Inwall Z-Wave smart switch. Uh, not the sexiest switch in the world, I know, but what is sexy about this switch is, is right here. It's got a thinner profile. This is the quick fit system they've got. It's 20% smaller and here's the original switch. We're going to be replacing this switch in my front exterior lights because uh, this one's pretty bulky and as you can see it didn't really fit in the box I was trying to fit it in but I made it fit anyways so uh, let's take a look at that. So this is what I came up with. It's a box extender. It sticks out of the wall about that much. Yes it's ugly. My wife just absolutely hates the thing almost as much as she hates the maple trim we still got going on. Um, but we're going to solve one of those problems here today with our new switch. So we're going to switch that out. Before you attempt to do anything like that, be sure the power is turned off at the breaker and always test the line with some sort of a, a voltage tester before you start doing anything. I found out the hard way one of my breaker switches was labeled for something else and uh, that's not a mistake you make twice. Uh, lucky to do that. So we're going to do that right now and we'll show you what's inside the box when we get that open. The one important point here, whenever you replace a Z-Wave switch, you'll want to run a Z-Wave Exclude and remove it from your system before you disconnect it. Uh, this will prevent ghost nodes in your Z-Wave mesh. So you see up front, they're essentially the same. One's a little narrower. But this new one, look how much thinner that is. That's going to save us just the amount of space we need to uh, fit this back in the box without that extender. So let's put that in. This GE switch does require a neutral wire, so if you live in a house that was wired by like your drunk uncle in the 1920s, you might be out of luck. Also, this switch can be used in a three-way switch application, if you're into that sort of thing. Overall, I was able to pair this very quickly and easily to my hub. It is a Z-Wave 700 series device, so it uses S2 security, and it can be included using Smart Start, but I added it using the traditional method just fine. So yeah, we're just going to do a quick automation here. We're just going to use basic rules. We're going to turn this on at sunset and then turn it back off again in the middle of the night. So we're just going to say what a time of day is sunset. And we're going to do this. We're going to turn it on. Select our new switch here. Front interior switch. And then we're going to select to turn it on. We're just going to wait until a certain time here. I'm going to say 12.22 in the AM. And then we're going to add one more action. So it waits till then. And then we're going to turn off the front exterior switch again. So we'll check our rule. The time is sunset. Turn off the light. Wait till it's 12.22. Then turn off the light. That looks pretty good to me. So we're going to hit done. And our thing is set. We've got a new rule. I know we had our lights go off a little bit after midnight. Some people like to leave them on until sunrise. Others, you might put a motion sensor out there. And then you can have those lights come on if any predators are sneaking around your house. But we've got a vicious attack dog that will take care of any of that type of nonsense. That's it for this episode. As you can see, this is a pretty good switch. If you're looking something that's you know fits in with the rest of your dumb switches and has a nice thinner profile if you have an idea for a device you want to see us automate with a habitat let us know in the comments and if you have a need for whatever this was in my wall uh put that in the comments as well so thanks for watching and thanks as always for elevating your environment with habitat elevation mm -hmm.